Welcome back to Microsoft Access 2010 Beginner Level 1. For more free lessons on Microsoft Access, make sure to subscribe to my channel and visit my website at accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. In Lesson 7, we're continuing to enter data into our customer table. Okay, I'm ready to enter in my second customer. I'll type in Joe Smith from XYZ Corp at 101 Main Street, Buffalo, New York, 14220. I don't have his email address. That's okay. I'll just press tab. I've always been of the mindset that it's better to have no data than to have bad data. That's why I very seldom force users to have to input information. In a future class, I'm going to show you how to make certain bits of information required. However, I almost never require users to have to type something in. You can always generate a query later that says show me all of the missing data so I can call my customers and get it. Don't force your users to have to type in things like zip codes. What if they don't have it? They'll type in something wrong just to get the record in. Same thing with website. I'll tab past that. I do have his phone number, 716-555-3434, tab, num employees, let's say 500, tab, discount rate, how about 10%, I'll type it in as 0.1, that's the same as 10%, tab, customer cents, how about 3190, tab, and a credit limit of $500. Active, yes. Notes, no notes and now I'm on to the next customer. As you can see, once you've got the table all set up, it's now very simple to enter in your records. Now I'm going to type in several different customers, so I've got some sample data to work with in the class. I'd like you to do the same. However, if you don't feel like typing, I'll put these sample records up on my website so you can just copy and paste them. Here are my sample records. If you want to type in the same ones, that's okay. Just make sure you have a couple of different states, a few different last names. Now, if you don't feel like typing and you want to use the same data that I have, you can go to the special web page and download a copy of the data. Just go to 599cd.com slash xacdata1. That's a special page. I just set it up. You'll find a copy of the data there. You can copy it and paste it right into your table. Here's the web page. The data is right here in this little window. It's just plain text. Click on this button here that says click to select text. That'll select it. Then press Control C on your keyboard to copy. That will copy the data to your Windows clipboard. Now switch back over to Access, go in your Customer Table, click right here to select a new blank record, click in this little box on the left hand side so you have that arrow there, that'll select the entire record. You can't just be sitting like that, otherwise Access will try to paste all that data into the first name field. You have to select an entire record right there, then hit Paste on your keyboard, it's Control V as in Victor. You'll get a message says you're about to paste 11 records. Are you sure? Go ahead and say yes. And there's the data. That's how you can copy and paste data between two different applications. In this case, your web browser and Microsoft Access. Now, in this case, I had already typed in these first two records. So, those two records are duplicated now in the database. To delete a record, just click on that same spot again that selects an entire record and then press delete on your keyboard. It says you're about to delete one record. Press yes if you're sure. I'll press yes. Now I've got two Joe Smiths. I'll just delete one of those duplicate records. And that's how you can delete a record. Now don't worry if your auto numbers are not the same as mine. That customer ID Remember, we don't have to worry about the customer ID. Access will keep track of that for us. I was playing around a little earlier, copying and pasting some data. 
I deleted a few sample records. So as you can see here, IDs 3 through 13 are now gone forever. They'll never be reused. But again, that's okay. We don't have to worry about those IDs. Access tracks those for us. Now optionally, also on the web page, I've also included a link right here to download a fresh copy of my database. So if you'd rather do that instead of copying and pasting the text, you can also click right here. Now when you download any database from the web, you're going to see the security warning pop up. It says some active content has been disabled. Click here for more details. If you want to read the details, you can click here. But in a nutshell, Access is running this database in a secure mode. So none of the programming, the Visual Basic Code or macros, will run until you enable that content. This is to prevent people from sending you malicious code because you can do pretty much anything in Visual Basic. So if you download a database from a source that you might not trust, then you don't want to enable this content. In this particular case, you can trust me, so I'll click on the Enable Content button. Now this database only has one object in it, the customer table. But as you can see when I open it up, there's all of my data. Now as I mentioned in the introductory video for this course, we have student forums available on the website where you can post any questions that you have about each lesson. If you're watching this course in our online theater, you'll see the student forum for each lesson appear next to the video. Here are some of the questions that students asked about this lesson back in the Access 2003 class. The most popular question is, do you have to save each record as you enter it or when you're finished entering it? The answer is no. Access will automatically save each record as soon as you move off of it. For example, let's say I come in here and edit Anna Pecor's company name from Pharmacon to Pharmacom. Notice over here on the very left hand side, this little pencil appears. That means you're in the process of editing that record. In database terminology, we call it a dirty record. Now as soon as I move off of Anna Pecor's record down to here, notice the pencil goes away. Access just saved that record automatically to the table. You don't have anything more to do. When you close a table, Access also saves the records. In fact, the only time you actually have to save something is when you make a design change or a layout change. Now a design change would be modifying one of the fields, changing a field name or a property type. Or if you make a layout change, for example, if I make this column a little wider, if I go to close the table, Access says, do you want to save the layout of the table? You can say yes, and then Access will remember the width of that column. So the next time you open it, it'll be the same width. But that has nothing to do with the data in the table, which is saved automatically. Another popular question asked is, how do you move the columns around in the table? Well, to move a column, just click on the column header right here. See how I can see the down arrow? Click there. Then let the mouse go. Now click and drag again in the same spot. Click and drag it to the left, for example. And now I've just moved last name in front of first name. Now that's another example of a layout change. It doesn't really change the structure of the table, but just how the columns are displayed when you open up data sheet view. I'll move that column back where it was by clicking and dragging it back to the right. Now those are a couple examples of questions that students who've taken this course before you have asked. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the student forum window. Make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. And also don't forget to visit my website at accesslearningzone.com YouTube for more advanced lessons and other specials just for YouTube viewers.